Hello. My name is Dr. Francois Ricard. I am an osteopath and a PhD. I am director of the International Madrid School of Osteopathy, EOM, and president of the Scientific European Federation of Osteopaths, SEFO. In this video, I want to talk to you about the pain provocation tests for the pelvis and the spine that should be used first in the diagnosis of the musculoskeletal system. This video is the first in a group of five videos on osteopathic diagnosis of the spine. Based on scientific literature, it will include Pain provocation tests Static palpation Segmental mobility tests or mobility tests, also called dynamic palpation. 1. Segmental mobility tests for the sacroiliac joint. 2. Segmental mobility tests for the cervical spine. 3. Segmental mobility tests for the lumbar and thoracic spine. Sacroiliac joint pain provocation tests. They allow the diagnosis of sacroiliac joint syndrome and include Distraction test Compression test Gainsland test Sacral thrust test Thigh thrust test Cranial shear test Patrick's test Hip flexion adduction test Slipman et al. 1998. Indicate that a combination of three pain-provoking maneuvers, compared to the sacroiliac joint nerve block, as the gold standard, shows a positive predictive value of 60%, and that their results do not support the use of the pain-inducing maneuvers for the sacroiliac joint. On the contrary, the meta-analysis by van der Werf et al. 2000. Indicates acceptable reliability. The study by van der Werf et al. 2000 showed an acceptable reliability for five pain provocation tests. However, since other authors have described contradictory results, there is a need for more research on sacroiliac joint pain provocation tests. It has been suggested that using a test cluster is a more reliable way to proceed. It would be better than using individual tests. The meta-analysis by Kochmeyer et al. 2002 show that a cluster of pain provocation tests has a kappa of 0.70 and which it is a relatively reliable method to evaluate somatic dysfunction of the sacroiliac joint. According to Hicks et al. 2003, the results of the pain provocation tests were generally more reliable kappa 0.25 to 0.55, than those of the passive intervertebral segmental mobility tests, kappa minus 0.02 to 0.26. Van der Werf et al. 2006, indicate that the diagnostic accuracy of a combination of five provocation tests for sacroiliac joint pain is good. Sensitivity of 0.85. Specificity of 0.79 Positive predictive values of 0.77 and negative of 0.87 Positive probability ratio of 4.02 and negative of 0.19 In the study by Laslett et al. 2005, in a group of three or more provocation tests for sacroiliac joint pain, distraction, compression, tight trust, gazelin, and sacral thrust, the sensitivity was 94%, and the specificity 78%. Lastly, 2005, indicates that combinations of sacroiliac joint pain provocation tests are valuable in the clinical diagnosis of symptomatic sacroiliac joint. When all provocation tests do not cause family pain, the sacroiliac joint can be ruled out as a source of pain. Robinson et al. 2007 
studied the inter-rater reliability of various movement palpation tests, and six sacroiliac pain provocation tests, compression test, distraction or gapping test, posterior pelvic pain provocation test, Patrick Faber, bilateral and unilateral internal rotation of the hip, joint plate test in prone position, pelvic drop test, or unipodal support. The results of Robinson et al. 2007 on two groups of tests showed a percentage of agreement that ranged from 67% to 97% and kappa values from 0.43 to 0.84 for the pain provocation tests. For the palpation test, the percentage of agreement was 48% and the kappa value was minus 0.06. The pain provocation test groups were found to have a good percentage of agreement, and the kappa values ranged from 0.51 to 0.75. Arab et al. 2008. Indicate the use of a group of movement palpation tests, or provocation tests. It is a more reliable method, kappa, than a single test to evaluate the sacroiliac joint. Individual tests, kappa 0.52 to 0.84, result fair to substantial. Motion palpation groups, or provocation tests, kappa 0.44 to 0.92, result moderate to excellent. Combinations of movement palpation, and pain provocation tests, kappa 0.52 to 1.00, result substantial to excellent. Werner et al. 2013. Indicate that the posterior superior iliac spine distraction test has 100% sensitivity. A specificity of 89%. A positive predictive value of 90%. A negative predictive value of 100%. According to Telly et al. 2018. Most of the sacroiliac pain provocation tests have limited reliability and validity by themselves. Whereas a multidisc group consisting of sacroiliac joint pain provocation tests is a reliable method, and these tests can be used in place of unnecessary invasive procedures. Pain provocation tests for the spine. Hidalgo et al. 2014 found good inter-examiner agreement and good validity of the active and passive tests of pain provocation in the lumbar spine. Pain inflection. Kappa equals 0.87 to 1. Pain in extension. Kappa equals 0.65 to 0.74. Passive intervertebral movement was moderate to excellent. Kappa equals 0.42 to 0.83. The inter-examiner's test showed good sensitivity, 0.67 to 0.87, and good specificity, 0.82 to 0.85, with the combined examination. In the study by Ludke et al., 2017, the pain provocation test for the cervical spine, by palpation and sustained pressure, has a high sensitivity and specificity in case of migraine. In the study by Thalhammer et al., 2018, clinical pain provocation test for the lumbar zygopophysial joints showed moderate reliability. Fleiss kappa equals 0.46 and a percentage of general agreement of 68.8%. According to Bainan et al., 2018, in the thoracic spine for pain palpation, the kappa presented a mild to substantial. 0.12 to 0.76, moderate or substantial agreement for most vertebral levels, T1, T2, and T6 to T12. Overall, there was fair to substantial agreement for segmental sensitivity, 0.22 to 0.77. Conclusions 
combinations of pain provocation tests have good inter-examination reliability, particularly at the sacroiliac joint level. They should be used first. These tests allow a topographic diagnosis and must be completed with active and passive segmental mobility tests. The most reliable is to use clusters of combinations of pain provocation and segmental mobility tests. Here we have the references of the scientific articles used in this conference. Thank you for listening.